All right, let's talk today about ways to get better at saving money. And what's great about this topic is it basically can apply to everyone in a different scale, in a different way. Many of the segments we do about budgeting or allocating resources or whatever the case may be, often as an aside, say, if you can increase your savings rate or after you have found a way to increase your savings rate. But we should really talk about like how that's done and what it means. The first thing that you should really do when when you're trying to start this process is you have to set a budget. Now, we've talked about budgeting before and we have clips about setting a budget. So watch that video first. The gist of it is you want to figure out uh, how much you earn. So we would call that your after tax income. Um, once you figure that out, tally up your expenses. Um, fixed and variable and discretionary. We talk about that in that segment. See whether you're breaking even and see if you can immediately find some places where you can cut back. The important thing is you have to continue to track your spending. Um, I know people who do not have any idea what they spend. I have tracked my spending in every category, every dollar um, since I was like 22 years old. OK, so if you came to me with tears in your eyes, you know, you're a big, strong person, but you still are crying for whatever reason. And, and you come to me and you say, David, sir, how much did you spend on uh, gasoline um, back in uh, November of uh, 2014? I wouldn't have to look that up by looking at receipts or anything like that. I just look at the gasoline category for that month. OK, you've got to track the spending. And then you also have to uh, regularly, I guess we would call it compare spending to budget. Um, now, something else you should do is make sure that you are following the financial order of operations. Um, financial O O O. This is another segment that we did individually. We have a separate video, but the idea is it's crucial to avoid high interest debt, to be protected with insurance, to know what is the right order that I should be spending and organizing my savings. This will allow you to save more money in the long run. Now, if you're not a natural saver, you should really look at automating your savings. OK, so this would be another thing. Automate savings. What I mean by this is if you have direct deposit as a paycheck or whatever mechanism it is through which you get paid, even if you get paid physical cash at the earliest possible moment, some money should be diverted right away. If you've determined, well, I can save 15 percent, but if I don't separate that, I'll see the money sitting in my account and I'll spend it. That 15 percent should be diverted to a separate account or in some way as soon as you receive that money and whether it goes to a savings account or a Roth IRA or whatever, make it an automatic thing. Also, it can be good to let's see if we can go over here to number six. Um, I would call this. Prevent. Impulse buying for some people, I fortunately don't have this issue. I have the opposite problem where I will think about a, a purchase for too long. That's a different issue, different video. Some people make impulse buys. They see something at a store or Amazon. They just buy it right away. There are a lot of different things that can be said about this. One philosophy that can be useful to people is unless you're talking about like food or you've got a flat tire, right, where it's you need that. You need to fix that. You need to deal with that. Um, put a pause. Make a note somewhere. Oh, I wanted to get this new pair of sneakers. Let me make a note for five days from now or even 10 days from now to re ask myself, do I still want that thing? Many people find that if you just delay, you will realize 10 days later, you know, for whatever reason, for an emotional reason or whatever, I thought I wanted this thing. I haven't even thought about these sneakers in the 10 days I've waited. I actually don't want the sneakers. I'm not going to buy the sneakers. That's one philosophical idea. Also, you can take other measures, right? You can not save any payment methods on Amazon. So that way, if you want to buy something, you can't just click that credit card. You actually have to type in the full credit card every time you can. Um, uh, yeah, they're not. Don't carry. Don't carry anything with which you could buy. Right. Carry 25 bucks with you when you go out in cash. 
in case you need food or fuel, but otherwise don't carry any credit cards. There are systems that you can put in place there as well. Um, when you make purchases shopping around, OK, uh, shop. Around another way to save, make sure you're getting the best deal. Are there cheaper alternatives that you can consider? Similarly, take advantage of sales and discounts at the grocery store. But also understand that a lot of the sales and discounts at other types of retailers sometimes are just kind of a facade. Uh, sometimes something will be marked as on sale from a higher original cost, and it's really the same price everywhere. So try to understand the way in which a lot of that marketing really gets at gets at psychology. Um, another savings uh, tool is cook at home, and you will find that if you apply even a little bit of thought into your grocery plan, have a grocery plan. Don't go and wander around, have a list of meals you want to make, know what ingredients you need, etc. You will dramatically reduce your spending on food and quite frankly, often end up making much better and healthier meals than what you would get out at a restaurant. That's that's an important one. And then understand your own um, conception of whether you tend to spend more when it's cash or cards or debit, different people have different tendencies when it comes to that. Um, and then lastly, make a savings goal. OK, savings goal. And this, of course, in a sense, would happen ideally in number one. Your budget should ideally have your savings goal. But make sure you understand what am I trying to save by the end of the year? And that can often when you say I might spend 100 bucks on shoes. Wait a second. How is do I need the shoes and how is this going to affect my ability to get to what my savings goal is at the end of the year? All very useful techniques at whatever level, scale and income you find yourself at.